Hey YouTube, welcome to an awesome new episode of Comics and Stuff. Uh, my name is Devin and I am your host, and today I'm going to be telling you guys how to collect comic books. Uh, this video is a request from, from a few friends of mine who really want to get into comic book collecting and just don't know how. So I've come up with this easy to understand, you know, 10 point list of, um, you know, just pointers on how to begin your collection, where to start, what to do, XYZ. Um, so without further ado, let's just hop into number one. Step one, uh, find what you like. Now, I know that's a very broad thing of me to say, find what you like. There's so many things you could like, um, and that's okay. It takes time to really figure out what you like. Just think about your interests, your hobbies, uh, find things that, you know, like are visually attractive to you and, you know, like find writing that's attractive to you. And you can really apply this to any sort of collectible. You can't, not just comics, you can do it to action figures, uh, artwork, you could do it with, you know, baseball cards, really anything. You just have to find what you like. There's people who, for example, they, they exclusively collect just horror memorabilia from horror movies and, you know, like suspense and thriller movies. But then you have people who, you know, only like Superman. So they only collect Superman, you know, like, and that's okay. Just find something that really interests you. But that also goes kind of into step two of, um, don't collect things because everybody else likes it. Or in other words, don't be a bandwagoner. Uh, don't be a bandwagoner. What does that mean? Devin, why are you saying don't be a bandwagoner? Well, I'm sure that a lot of you can agree. Um, a bandwagoner is somebody who only likes something because everybody else likes it. And nobody wants to be that guy. Now, you know, if you see a superhero movie and you genuinely enjoyed it, you enjoyed the character, and you liked the story, and you're like, wow, this is really cool, I want to get into this, that's great. That's not bandwagoning. Bandwagoning is, uh, by definition, it's, you know, for example, everybody's talking about Batman versus Superman, and you know nothing about Batman versus Superman, and instead of taking your time to learn and understand the characters, you all of a sudden just hop on the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, I've always loved Superman and Batman. Yeah, they're my favorites. Oh, I know everything about them. Yeah, no... It, that is bandwagoning, and a lot of people don't like that. Um, it, it makes us uncomfortable because we try to discuss things with you, and then you don't know what you're talking about, and then it just gets awkward. Um, so that don't be a bandwagoner. I, you know, for example, I can I can share an experience with you. I've been an Aquaman fan uh, since I was a small kid. Now, you know, going back to step one, find what you like. I really like underdog superheroes. I like the guys who are kind of like the butt of the superhero jokes or the guys that are a little more misunderstood, you know. Um, and Aquaman happens to be one of the characters I attached to as a kid. And, I can, you know, I, I can't tell you enough how many times people would be like, ugh, his favorite superhero is Aquaman. Wow, what a loser. And now um, he got he's getting a movie. And all of a sudden, all the people that were making fun of me, oh, yeah, man, I've always loved Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, no, he's great. Awesome character. That's a bandwagoner, and it frustrates me because this is a character that I've become incredibly invested in, and people are, you know, just now, now that he's cool, you know, now he's fun, and everybody tells me, well, you're just a bandwagoner. You know, you, you get that a lot. I walked into a store looking for some Aquaman toys the other day, and I get, oh, you're just one of those bandwagon fans. No, 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 no. So don't be a bandwagoner. It frustrates people. It makes things awkward. And um, it's, it's just not a good look. Now, on to step three. So here's a big one. Quality over quantity. Uh, now, I know that you guys have heard that all throughout your lives. And it's true. And it's true with every single type of collecting, nerddom, fandom, whatever. Quality over quantity. You don't need every single... Aquaman action figure. I guess I'm using Aquaman as my example guy throughout this video. You don't need every single Aquaman action figure because not all of them are worth money. Not all of them are worth collecting. Some of them are kind of dumb. You know, find the ones that you like that will make you happy and keep them in nice condition. Quality. Don't just buy them simply because it's Aquaman. That's quantity. You don't need everything. Just find the ones that you enjoy that you would like to have as a part of your collection. Just It's the same thing with comic books. You don't need to buy every single variant cover. You don't need to buy every single key issue. 
find the ones that you like, that you think are a good investment, and that will make you happy and you'd be happy to display in your home. Um, but that also kind of gets into step four, which is working with a budget. So let's move on to step four. Working with the budget. Um, plain and simple, not all of us are millionaires. Um, I don't, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a rich person. Uh, obviously, you guys know that I just filmed this in my room, and I, this is my little command center. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like, don't expect yourself to be able to purchase, you know, 9.8, you know, near mint comic books all the time. Those can get really expensive. You want to... Action Comics number one at a 9.8. Do you have $3 million? Because I don't have $3 million. Um, and that's something to, important to keep in mind. You, not, you know, for example, if you want a 9.8 comic book, but it's, you know, a thousand bucks. I mean, you want the you want the comic book. You don't, you know, necessarily want the... Per, I mean, it's, it would be nice to have the perfect condition book, but you can't afford it. You don't necessarily want the 9.8. You just want the book itself. You can get... Uh, 3.5, 4.0, you know, 4.5, something in the lower ranges. They're still visually pleasing, readable, nice condition, and not as expensive. You know, for us, uh, for us poor guys who don't make fifteen thousand dollars a month or something like that, we have to understand that we have to work with it. So if you're new to collecting and you aren't necessarily rich, you know, don't be scared to look at lower grade comic books. You know, uh, I can tell you a story about. You know, my Aquaman number one, I have one at a 5.0, and I bought this about four years ago. And four years ago, before, you know, obviously before he, you know, movie was announced and blah, 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 got it for a couple hundred bucks, you know, and it, it, it was a good investment. I mean, I'm not planning on reselling it. This is mine for me, and I love this book. Um, but, you know, I couldn't afford a 9.8. 9.8 was, you know, it was like, that's like a two. $2,500, $3,000 book. That's like a monthly paycheck for some people, and you don't want to spend a month's worth of pay on a comic book. Not all of us can do that. So what did I do? I was like, you know what? I understand. I can't afford a 9.8, so I'm going to work within my budget and purchase a book that's still visually pleasing, still readable, still good-looking at just a lower grade. Plain and simple. Um, so work within a budget, and I think that goes hand-in-hand -hand with step four, which is quality over quantity. You, you know, find a book that you like. It doesn't need to be perfect and work within a budget and get the one that's going to make you happy. So uh, having said that, let's go, I guess this would be into step five. Uh, step five would be research your interest. So find what you like, you know, and um, read about them, learn about them. You know, it can be the history of action figures. It could be the history of your favorite superhero. It could be really anything um, and I think this kind of goes hand in hand with don't be a bandwagon or don't just say you like something because everybody else likes it. If you are genuinely interested in a character or, you know, a movie or something, I think one of the best things you can do is read about its history. So, you know, uh, like for example here, and these are really good. A lot of like comic book publishing companies like DC or Marvel, they will have collected editions that have the history of their characters. So I have this showcase presents number one, you know, Aquaman number one. It has you know, first few years of Aquaman comics in here. So if I'm ever curious, if I want to reference something, if I want to read some old school, you know, Aquaman, I can look at this awesome book and then still keep my Aquaman number one in its nice, you know, CGC slab. So it's always good to research your character um, just to know what you're talking about, to have knowledge. I mean, if you're really into a character, I think that that sort of stuff would be um, really helpful. And again, I, like I said, that goes hand-in-hand hand with not being a bandwagoner. Um, but in any case, let's move on to step six. So, and that's that's kind of also goes hand-in-hand hand with research character. Um, read what you collect. So let's talk about that. Read what you collect. Now, I'm not saying if you get a comic book that's worth, you know, 1500 bucks, don't just yank it out of its bag and get your greasy hands all over it. I mean, if you get a really nice, rare comic book that you really enjoy, that you want to read, read it. You know? Wash your hands. Make sure they're dry. Make sure they're clean. Make sure that you're in a clean environment if this is like a high-end collectible comic or a comic you want to keep in nice condition. But flip through it. You know, if it's an older book from the 60s or 70s, they have that smell it's, that you're not going to get anywhere else. They have, 
you know, the look, the uh, the character that's been that's gone into them, and it's really cool to hold that physically in your hands, um, without the plastic covering of a slab. Um, most of my rare comics, I mean, you get comics to read them, right? So read them before you get them graded, and we'll talk about grading later. But most of my rare comics, before I do anything with them, the first thing I do is I will wash my hands, sit, you know, in a quiet, you know, clean space, and read through them. You know, it's a great idea. Um, kind of gives you that experience of like how delicate these books are since you're, you know, actually handling them. You got to be careful and you can just read the story and it's it's enjoyable. So read what you collect. Uh, let's move on to the next step. Um, step seven. Is this step seven? Sorry, I have it all written down here. Yes, step seven. So don't stick to just one thing. Expand upon what you like. Um, and when I say it like that is, you know, read what you like, collect what you want to collect, but, you know, for example, I, I like Aquaman. That's kind of part of where I started. Well, I started with Star Wars, but that's for another video. But, like, when I got into superheroes and, you know, DC and Marvel and stuff, Aquaman was where I started. And I noticed, I really like these kind of, like, underdog superheroes, people that, you know, like, people, other people don't appreciate, um, Aquaman is kind of the butt of all superhero jokes for quite a long time. Oh, he just talks to fish. You know, I like that he was he was very really underappreciated for all that he does, and I kind of sought out, uh, I, I I expanded, and I sought out other characters that were like Aquaman, and I stumbled in you know across Adam Strange. He was an extremely popular sci-fi character back in the fifties, um, you know, and not a lot of people know about him. He has a few books about him. He's just finally after I don't know how many years of hiatus he had um, he just got like one line of comics uh, in Justice League United um, you know and then from there I was like oh well I like sci-fi and you you kind of build upon your expansion so I went from Aquaman to Adam Strange Adam Strange to Rip Hunter uh, you know and then Rip Hunter I moved over to Ant-Man uh, you know there's there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I mean expand be open-minded try new characters or new books or even different publishing companies you don't have to stick to just one expand your universe but uh yeah so on to the next step so this is an important one proper storage how do you store your comic books um that's a great question uh you know for for graded books that have the slab you should generally rotate them if you're going to have them on display because if you keep them, and this actually goes for any comic book, so don't, it's not just that, but, um, you know, especially for older comics, um, their ink is really sensitive to sunlight. If you keep them out in the sun for too long, they'll fade. They fade, they lose a lot of color, and it's undesirable to some people, and I've made that mistake before. Um, so if you're going to keep your comics on display, rotate them. Keep your comic books in a dark place cool place when they're not on display get long boxes or get cabinets where you can stack them in the in the back corner then have other books kind of like in front and you can switch them out um, i'm sure you guys notice my four books that are here uh they they rotate that, that hasn't always been batman that's not always infinity gauntlet that's not always green lantern 23 that's not always warlord number one or actually that's first issue special number eight but anyways um you know so that, that's one thing. Another thing is um, Mylar. Mylar is fantastic, um, especially the BCE or the, like, you can, you can, if you go to, a, you know, the CGC website <coughs> or if you just Google, uh, you know, comic book protectors, um, there's a ton of different places that will sell, like, UV protecting, you know, Mylar bags, um, and they're great. It's an investment, but if you want to keep your comic books looking nice without any fade, Keep them in like a you know and keep them in like an acid-free environment and things like that. Look at the mylar. It's a great investment to keep your comic books safe. Um, if you guys are curious about any of those, I will put links in the description below um, to different you know comic book protectant uh, websites so you can learn more and possibly purchase products. Um, but on to the next step. Know when to get your comic book graded. Now. It's expensive, and it's quite the investment to get comic books graded. Uh, based on the year, sometimes it will, you know, the year that the comic book was released, sometimes it'll only cost you 18 bucks, but <clears throat> some books might cost you 35 bucks. 
it's a big investment because then you might want to fast track that's another 10 bucks then you got to pay for shipping then you have to wait it's a long time um and it can get quite expensive you know for for cgc i know that if you want to do uh their standard 15 book minimum full submission uh with a fast track each book is 25 bucks plus ten dollars for the fast track fee and then shipping i mean that's like over four hundred dollars it's expensive and not all of us just have four hundred dollars so no integrate your comic books uh personally i recommend um only grading comic books in two instances one high value comics comic books that are hundreds of dollars or you know even even just a hundred bucks uh, 100 200 300 400 500 thousand dollars get them graded protect that condition you never know what's going to happen you might need that someday um b number two uh get comic books graded if they have a lot of personal value to you you know if you want to keep a book in its particular condition because it's your favorite or for example uh my very first comic book, the first comic book i ever owned the, the comic book that started it all i still own it and it's not even worth 20 bucks but it's important to me because it's what started me on this path of comic bookdom and so i want to get it graded to keep it safe and i just haven't had a chance to because it's it it takes time it takes money and so now I'm finally about to send it off, hopefully in the next few weeks here, and you guys will be able to see it. Um, but yeah, so only grade your comics, A, if it's you know a high value, B, if it has high sentimental value. Now, if you guys are curious about different comic book grading companies, because there's a ton, I'm going to put some links to my intro to comic book grading companies right here. You got uh, CGC, uh, PGX, CBCS, and Vault that are available in North America. If you guys are curious to see how to get your comic books graded outside of North America, um, you'll want to look at this video right here. Um, but let's uh, move on to the final step. Here we are. You made it to the end of the video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Now, the final step is know your resources. Where can I buy rare comics? Where can I research rare comics? Where can I... Uh, learn about comic book values that you have so many resources now I'm going to tell you these websites and these different things you can purchase um, But also I'll, I'll put links to those websites in my description below um, But comic connect is a wonderful website. It's 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 just it's it's like eBay, but only for comic books um, it was started by the guys who now run Metropolis comics so Dan Zerzerlo or Z I can't always pronounce the last name and Dan if you ever see this. I'm sorry um, and then Stephen Fischler, who is the guy who created the grading scale of 0.5 to 10.0 Gem Mint. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, you can uh, look up comic books. They're always there for generally a decent price. You can see kind of like what they're selling for, what they're, what overpriced is, X, Y, Z. You can kind of do the same thing on eBay, but eBay is a little more uh, Wild West than Comic Connect. Another great resource would be uh, mycomicshop.com or milehighcomics.com. They're both huge comic book dealing houses. Um, they deal in every single era of comic books. Um, you can see they have like easy grading scales that you can view on their website and easy descriptions where you understand what each grade means from 0 0.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.8, all the way up to you know 7.5, 8.0, and so on and so forth. Um, they have an easy description just right on their tab. You click grading and boom. Um, you could, they also have like monthly auctions and you can see, um, you know, all of their, all of their other comic books that they deal. Um, another good thing would be the over the, the overstreet price guide. Uh, it's released every single year and each edition accounts for half the previous year and half the uh, following year. So, you know, currently we would be in the 2016, 2017 edition, um, cause the first half of 2016 is almost over that has a record of almost every single comic book ever published since comic books became a thing and their value based off of condition and it's a wonderful resource and tool to have especially when you're at comic book conventions or you know things like that and you want to figure out a value of a book based off its condition and and now keep in mind that for the overstreet price guide this is these are you know like uh median prices these are the averages um over the year that's reported to them by the overstreet advisors who uh, keep records of their comic book sales so sometimes you know, like, for example, an Aquaman 5.0 in the Overstreet Price Guide, they might read, oh, it's worth $400. But that's ignoring the hype of the Aquaman movie, which is now boosting a 5.0 to $1,000.
So you have to account for things like that as well. But generally speaking, it's very good. It's an awesome tool to have um, just for regular comics that don't have movies or anything like that coming up. Um, other great resources, I mean, you know, comic book shops in general, talk to the owners, talk to the employees, talk to guys like me, put comments in the section below. If you have questions, like I, I, I don't profess to be some sort of comic book, you know, genius, but I do have a very decent knowledge base and I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, you know, you can shoot me a message, you can tweet at me. Um, and if you guys are curious about my social media, make sure that you click at those links below. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, know your resources. I'll put as much information as I can in the description. Um, but I think we're that's that's wrapping it up for this video. Um, I had to redo it like 10 times because I had to make sure I said everything right. If I did anything wrong or if I didn't answer anybody's question, please make sure you let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer or correct anything that I have done or that anything that you're curious about. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's going to show up right here. And uh, also, you know, and thank you for your support. And if you're curious, check out my website. I do a weekly vlog every Wednesday. A link to my website will appear right above my head. And um, just make sure you check back on Monday for my next video. Um, but so thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time, YouTube.